how's it going, guys? We are the Phantom Group, and we actually just watched uh, together the pilot episode for the Flash episode number one, whatever you want to call it. And we're here today to talk about it and discuss it and what we liked and what we didn't like. Uh, I have, of course, some Zoro Fanboy124. Uh, we have the anime hero. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Saiyan Z3. Yo. And Merlin uh, Internet died halfway through, so yeah, he's not here at the moment. Comic book expert. He's not here. I know, right? He's, he should have been here, but uh, maybe he just didn't want to watch. Maybe he just got sick of it because, for me, the beginning <laughs> uh, was a little rough. No, it, kind of, little, it wasn't a little rough. It was rough, man. Well, yeah, it was very rough. They, I, was trying to, I was trying to be nice about it. They were just throwing exposition. I don't know about you guys. For me, they were just throwing exposition in our face, and it seemed like it was going at ridiculous pace. Uh, you know, I know it's a, it's a Flash series about going fast, but it was just, the pacing was really quick. Um, you know, I don't know. How, how did you guys feel about the beginning? It's uh... the, the, the thing is a lot of superhero beginnings have like that corny feel to it, or you kind of know how it's gonna start off. But here, so, there's something about the dialogue was just like, see my little out of place, yeah. not written well. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's not written like if there were actual people. Let's put it that way. It was just kind of like, well, what are you guys talking? About? Yeah, the, the one scene with him and his childhood friends, like we we're childhood friends, and I know it'd be weird because we're friends and we're you'd be know, like, like, like what like. It's like we're brother and sister, all these kind of things. Like they, they, these are conversations that wouldn't be held by normal people, as far as I'm concerned. It was just really weird. And the death scene, which was supposed to be emotional with his with his mother, just seemed weird. I don't know. I, I didn't feel any emotion towards it. It was just like really cheesily written. Well, for one thing, we know nothing really about the mom other than being the mom. So. And that one little scene they had about you have a good heart, Barry, all that kind of stuff. It seemed like they were rushing as fast as possible to get to the point where he becomes the Flash, which I'm not necessarily against, but the beginning was definitely bad. Uh, what about you, what you see? What do you, what do you think about it? Well, I, I noticed that the way that, um, obviously, if you guys don't know, um, that was Professor Zoom, you know, that yellow blur right. that mm-hmm. we saw. Um, one thing that I noticed was that uh, he was responsible for uh, uh, Barry's mom's death. Now it's it, it was interesting because in the Flashpoint paradox, which is I think the I think it's the most recent Flash related event, and DC you know did an animated movie on it and whatever. Uh-huh. But it's basically it is about um, really Flash, his mother, uh, and Professor Zoom, and uh, you know the the Flashpoint is actually what is is the reason behind why we have the new Fifty Two today. Right. Um, but uh, it, it was interesting in that. Um, the Flashpoint Paradox was about Professor Zoom trying to make uh, Flash correct history by saving his mother, right? right? But over here, it seems that Professor Zoom was the, was the actual reason for killing his mother. So it was a nice, it was a nice little, I think, ode to that in the sense that, uh, you know, Professor Zoom, they're, they're really trying to build him up as like the ultimate antithesis, antithesis, antithesis <laughs> to, to Flash. Right. Right. Um, because the thing, the, the thing about Flash enemies is that they're they're not very uh, they're not as like trademark or as significant, so to speak, as say someone like the Joker or Doomsday right. or Darkseid. Like you know, some of like those more violent, darker villains. Um, the Flash rogues are actually a little more like campy and stuff. So oh yeah, it my feels like characters like Captain Boomerang. I mean yeah, Captain Boomerang, Captain Cold, the Top, like all all like these whimsical villains. It's almost like really like a shonen manga if, <laughs> when you think about it. <laughs> it really is. So um, it seems like the show is is really trying to make you know it's trying to it's really trying to sell uh, Professor Zoom as like this really uh, like villainous character much of the bat, same Batman Batmanize it a little bit I would say yeah a little bit yeah. everything's been on the Batman route man <laughs> true that is true <laughs> but uh, uh I mean so so I guess I like the fact that Professor Zoom is like a little more evil so to speak I guess but uh, with yeah. Barry it's interesting because Barry. Barry is supposed to be like this very heroic figure um, in the DC Comics universe, and over here he's like very, very like vulnerable. He's like very, uh, uh, like clumsy, and you know he's like very young and stuff. He's not like a hardened veteran as much as he I is like, like a, in the like comics. A, like a Spider-Man type deal, but like pre, pre uh, Spider Bite. I don't know if I'm the only one. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because so the thing is, like um, Barry came off as like that very awkward, like social person. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Intelligent, but kind of socially awkward. Too, yeah, I guess. yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I feel, I feel like, I feel like this sort of this version of Barry would have been better suited if he was like Bart Allen, which is um Barry's grandson. Mm. I see. Yeah. The lineage man of the Flash family. Yeah. 
But um, I'm not really sure about the origins of Barry's character. I don't know if it's it's uh if this is, stays true to it in terms of like you know was he this typical like nerdy type before the accident? I don't know. The biggest, this, biggest comic his, book fans so... here. The comic book fans don't don't kill us, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not the biggest comic book fans, so. So it was before Flashpoint then. Um, it's like with the Flash Rebirth number one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that when did that issue come out? That was 2009. Okay. Right. Yeah. So okay. So my my fault. It was actually before uh, Flashpoint. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. These are fucking confusing to keep track of all these damn storylines. Yeah. <laughs> it really is one thing um, that kind of turns me away from comics. But anyway, that's the end of here nor there. Get back on track. Um, let's talk a little bit about the characters. Uh, honestly, need, none of the characters have really interested me throughout the story. The only one that kind of was kind of, was interesting was Barry himself, and and probably that that professor that lost his legs. Well, not really, because we see that he can walk. Yeah. At the words, that he just thinking, possibly... I don't know, at the very end, I was just thinking, fucking douche. <laughs> it's, I mean, that, that kind of hints that he may be Professor Zoom himself. Yeah. Because he was looking at it, you know, so. Uh, him and, and the Barry themselves are the only interesting characters. The girlfriend was generic as fuck. Dialogue was terrible. The fans are always uh, generic as fuck, man. Fucking. I know, but she just, she had no interesting traits i'm sorry no no no, no. What, what the, the problem with her is that she was being like a real douche with the whole relationship thing it's like i know right you're being very insensitive to a man's feelings man come on <laughs> like, no. she didn't pick up on the signs that he wanted to get inside that man like really right no right. can't you can't you understand that i want to well how can i put this like Speed force. <laughs> I want to speed force. <laughs> speed force. Uh, speed force. Um, uh, not too fast, hopefully. But uh, I mean, maybe a mo- like if you guys don't know, like in in the era, we actually see Amanda Waller. Um, she might show up now in, in the Flash because we saw Ollie later in the in the series, right? Or in in the episode, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't watched Arrow, then you guys are going to be like confused as to like why Ollie or Green Arrow is the way that he is in this episode, but uh. Uh, besides Barry, he's probably the only other character that I liked. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Here, what are your thoughts on the characters? Because uh, it is, I mean, it seemed kind of plain to me. I, I don't know. That's the thing. Like, uh, even on the first impressions, like, you could almost slip in any character in Flash's uh, position. It will be almost the same turnout. You got this heroic character who's like, has like this. Well, the only real difference that's slightly different is the, uh, He's upset. He, no, like, his relationship with his father being in prison, and I, I kind of feel like that scene got really touchy to me at towards the end about him. Like, I like that scene. You know, it makes like that like, it, 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 it makes it all good as long as like you believe in me, son. I'm like, oh fuck. That was good. That was the one like really good scene, like the real real scene. It felt real to me. Other ones didn't really feel like emotionally attached. Even the mother, death of the mother, yeah, I didn't feel. It. Wasn't feeling it. Yeah, uh, yeah. The one thing about Barry's character, though, uh, uh, I don't know if. Uh, if it's different in the comics, but normally the flashes that I've seen that represent Barry Allen, he has more of a kind of a comedic, lighthearted feel to him. He mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of seemed a little too serious for my liking in this, in this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this episode. I, I don't know if you guys feel the same way or no. Trust me, like right here, like honestly, it almost felt like more like Peter Parker to me than anyone else. Well, honestly, right. uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the exact feeling I got. It was, it was a Peter Parker vibe with like, yeah, with some, yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I really do. Uh, I mean, he still was a good character. I just thought that, you know, it could be a little more lighthearted so, about it. Yeah, he's all right. He's just right now they're taking a more dram- dramatic approach with him taking it like, you know, it's just responsibility, you know, for all these people to turn out this way. And I want to do something about, do something about. Right, right. It. Instead of building the character up, I kind of feel like they were just throwing things at you. They're like, building bam, you get a scene yeah. about a robbery. Bam, you get a scene about his dead mother. Bam, you get the relationship, uh, you know, triangle bullshit. But, you know, they they didn't really like. I feel like they were, they were taking time to like make you care about these characters. I don't know if I'm the only one about that. Got the substitute father figure, but uh, I, I kind of yeah. feel like almost every character was like against Barry, man. <laughs> like you got That's the true. girlfriend, you got her dad, then you got like that guy wheelchair. Like, like almost uh, everyone's saying that you're not a hero, Barry. Don't do shit, Barry. Well, we don't believe right. Barry. Even <laughs> like, oh, uh, I, I just want to comment on the possibility that uh, since now that we have um. Uh, Arrow as a TV show, and now that we have like a confirmed like Flash TV show, uh, we have Oliver Queen and Barry Allen like on the on the TV screen now. So there could be a possibility that Hal Jordan as the Green Lantern may show up sometime, like in either series or in his own TV show. So uh, I guess that like what I really like just want to throw out there is 
you know how like Marvel's doing like its movie cinematic universe? Yeah, right. and then DC's for, gonna you know ju- jump back. Do the same for the TV, yeah. And, like have it do the the DC uh, television universe perhaps. That'd um, be awesome. Which is a little embarrassing because Justice League came first, and you know the Avengers like a long time ago in the comics. <laughs> right. How long did it take you guys to finally, you know, work this shit up? <laughs> I mean, you got a decade. You <laughs> fucking could have had this a decade ago. Stories already written. You just got to put them on screen, not fuck up. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm fuck it up. <laughs> Don't rely um, too much on Batman. Don't put all your bets on him, man. Like, give some <laughs> to the other characters, too. Fuck. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Like, Wonder Woman, she hasn't got a fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Because she's a female, probably. But, you know... Not gonna play that card. Not gonna play that card. Yeah, don't play that card. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, all right. Let's uh, let's talk about since we talked about things that we didn't like about it, um, because there are quite a few. Let's talk about the things that we did like. Oh, uh, the we already mentioned the thing we did like that that little. Well, there were other things that I liked. Well, what was it? I, <laughs> the effects. I thought that the effects were for a television show pretty well done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I expected them to be a little bit more kind of clunky. I mean, there were some kind of corny shots of, like, him running, you know, that you know what I'm talking about, that screen yeah. shot where he's looking into the camera running, and you can see his, like, oh, it, it, that was, you know, some of those shots were a little, little cheesy, but overall, the effects of seeing him in, in, in just uh, going at, at full speed is, is, is pretty beast, uh, and the fight with the, the, the magician guy um, was, it was pretty well done, I, I, I liked it, I thought it was cool. It was a good starting fight uh, for him to get into his Flash persona, mm. you know? Yeah. So I will say the effects in the in the fight was pretty well done overall, considering it is a TV show. But you know, with these things, you got to kind of expect them to be a little bit cheesy. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I like that. Yeah. So, is there a, yeah. Uh, I I really don't get anything aside from that final scene. With honesty, I don't know. Yeah, I, was gonna, I, was gonna... I wasn't really too entertained with the episode. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I I was gonna say uh like um. Uh... I guess maybe not so much the episode, but uh, like like, like the new suit um for Flash looks very uh, Ew. yeah, bad. Um, I don't know, like uh, why they would choose I don't know how to feel about more it. red, like burgundy red. I don't get, I don't know. It just seems wrong. <laughs> yeah, it seems it wrong. Seems wrong. I don't know. I'm not really big on that, like caring about those kinds of things. But for oh, me, this... I think I, I thought it was okay. I mean, when I think of other costumes that you know that kind of flopped, the first one that comes to mind is the uh, recent RoboCop suit. I'm like, no, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that whole hand thing. I'm like, no, that's that's not gonna yeah. work. Kind of the George, George Clooney bad nipples. Oh, that God. shit. Oh my God. No, no, no <laughs> listen. That shit. That shit with RoboCop like in the movie when we saw like his lungs. Oh my God. That shit was crazy. You know, I still haven't seen the uh, the reboot. <laughs> I haven't either. I just watched that scene though. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, feel, I feel like uh, yeah. If you're sorry, but uh, uh, Flash's <laughs> Flash's suit, I think, can be a little more like like the thing. The thing about like superhero costumes, I feel like, is that uh, they should be like like a uh, cloth, like vinyl. You know, mm. they should be like smooth, not very like armor esque. I, I don't I know. Like, I, I was thinking armor actually, but with a flash suit, I don't know what it felt like. Like <laughs> Those may sound weird, like fucking bondage, like like, like material. <laughs> so it felt like it looked like like it looked like bondage material, man. Am I the only one? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's weird, man. Like if it was painted black instead of red, oh. that motherfucker, you know. You know, add, add, add that glary leather and then you know, like. <laughs> it just didn't seem right. It just didn't seem right to me. I I, I don't know. Uh, you remind me of that one outfit of Bane that I hate. God, that what? there's this one design where he kind of looks like a gimp. That's the thing. Yes. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, it's the animated series one. Let me put a uh, Bane, the new Batman, Adventures. Uh, yeah. Oh, what have you done, Batman? Oh yeah. Yeah, this. Oh, out- yeah. yeah, this outfit. I, I really don't like his mask. It puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> 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 that is kind of like a fucking gimp suit. Yeah, see, I like that. It's the, it's the mask. It's just the mask. Yeah, like. It's color, yeah, and the color too. I don't know. I just feel, I have more problem with the color than necessarily the look of it, and maybe the material seemed a little odd. And I could have been like more bright red. That's the traditional flash yeah. look, you know. Yeah. It seemed too right. burgundy-ish for me. I, I don't know. That's just my just my two cents. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, 
pretty much all. Let's talk about the uh, the cameo from from the, the TV show Arrow. Yeah, Arrow, uh, you know, Green Arrow yeah. shows up. Mm-hmm. Well, not Green Arrow. Arrow shows up. So. <laughs> He's green. Oh fuck. <laughs> not very green. Uh, <laughs> well, what did you think about that scene? Um, well, I, did not see, I, I felt like I should see it coming, but I'm, when it happened, I was like, oh, okay, that's why he's narrating the damn story. So I was like, it makes sense. It was a surprise. Yeah, so. yeah uh, I mean, Barry actually, before this TV show, he actually had like his own episode in, in the Arrow TV series where like he shows up. Um, basically, what happens is that Queen Industries, like they have a like this earthquake machine stolen. I think it's an earthquake machine, if I'm not mistaken. But like, there's a machine that's stolen from them. And uh, Barry is actually like one of the cops working the case, and he actually strikes up like a, like a flirtatious relationship with uh, Felicity. And Felicity is like the, you guys know like who Oracle is in Batman, right? Like Barbara, yeah. like how she does like all the computer work. Yeah, right. Felicity is pretty much like that in Arrow, except for Ollie. So yeah, they strike up a relationship, and then um, the the ending of that episode actually has you know Barry falling into the chemicals and being struck with the lightning. So. Oh. He's actually yeah, so he's actually in a coma for the rest of season two in Arrow. Oh, so it all comes together. I see. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So it's like, that's the thing that's weird. They can write like the structure of a story right, but when it comes to like characters and the way they express themselves, it's not really good. But uh, yeah. I, I think I think I always come back to the question of whether I like Stephen Amell as like Oliver Queen and Arrow because, like. Uh, like Merlin was saying earlier, before you know he his internet his internet connection died or whatever. But uh, um, you know before he was saying that you know uh, Oliver has like these like quirks. He's like he has like a little wit to him. He's he can be like snappy and stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, Ollie in in the TV show really doesn't have that when he's Arrow. He's more like Batman. He has like a deep monotone voice. He's very almost like brutal. Um, and he's like very like deadpan and stoic. Um, like especially in that first season. And he has like the voice changer, which makes his voice like very uh, like deep and stuff, um, and you know very deadpan and stoic. Uh, that's that's sort of like a departure from how Oliver is in the comics. So whenever I see Stephen Amell as like Oliver in, in Green Arrow, I'm just like, is this really like the Oliver that I knew? No. You know what I mean? No. It's... Yeah. I, I I I hate to make it about Oliver instead of Barry, but I mean that's just, that's just like a. It's always been like a, like a problem for me when it when it came to the character because even Stephen Amell, like in interviews, he said that uh, he's not very he, like he he was actually inexperienced coming into you know this is like his first like major role in acting so uh, he's just he's still getting like used to the character so uh, yeah um, but I, I I don't know I think I think I think uh, the guy who plays Barry will I think he I think he'll do a good job I think he will because even even though Stephen Amell even though I'm not sure of his how he portrays Oliver. I still like the, the, the his performance somewhat. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. I think they once... I mean, this episode, I don't want to judge it too badly because it seemed like they were just just getting to the point that they wanted to get to to actually start the story. They wanted to establish characters, establish the backstory. They didn't take too much time to deal with the backstory to really... You know, they seemed like they just did a quick job of it. You know what I'm saying? To get to him being the Flash and then starting from there. So yeah. I think like the next episode is going to be the true start of what the what the show could possibly be. This episode, although it kind of seemed lazy and quick, uh, I give it leniency because you know they just wanted to. I don't know. I just felt like they had a lot of stuff to put into one episode, and they kind of they, they it was a little rushed. It seemed um, and just full of exposition. I didn't really get to see any of the characters and what makes them characters. So. Uh, for me, it was it was lackluster. I, I don't know. Oh, overall, I th- thought it could have been better, but like I said, I don't want to judge it too badly because we didn't really get to see what the characters are about yet. That's just my my general synopsis. What, what do you guys think overall? Um. Well, I I think we're going to finally see. Uh. I mean, I mean, I think this episode was kind of good in the sense that Barry, you know, how he how he had to deal with like death during like one of his escapades. You know. Um. You know. I mean, we all saw like that guy die like during the. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I guess him, like, trying to learn, like, how to be a hero, um, that's something that they're going to explore, like, in this first season. And then, you know, obviously upcoming episodes. But uh, that's actually similar to, like, what Oliver did in Arrow in season one, like, how he had to learn to be, like, less lenient and not kill people as aggressively as he was, um, as, as, as aggressively as he was in the first season. And that's when he sort of became a little more lenient in the second season. So I, I think, like, that learning curve as a hero... We're gonna see Barry undergo that, um, 
and we'll probably see him be more like confident and confident and stuff. But uh, I think he's gonna kill some people at first and like learn later. Or I don't think Flash would do that. Though. I don't. I don't think Flash is gonna kill people. I mean, if he's gonna kill, he'll do it accidentally. Never, ne- never like with the conscience, like how Ollie like... did in season one. Right, right. Yeah, man, this mm. is a Robocop, you know. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like in this episode, like he's like he, when when he talks to the green, to Arrow, he says, "I killed somebody." And like, I mean, or I let somebody die when I was trying. So I didn't even like notice that person motherfucker died. It was just so fast and quick, and he didn't really like sulk over it. So it seemed like, you know, it, I think that was his, like, moment where like, he was going to have conflict of what he was going to do. Um, and it kind of goes into the, you know, saying the whole thing that things rushed. Uh, this episode felt rushed. And, uh, there were certain things going on, and I just couldn't really like, care about these. They didn't take time to explain it. I, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah, yeah, I, I hope that it, you yeah, know, he doesn't really get, start killing people. It seems a little off his character. But... Oh, that's so very off. Oh. I hope they don't go too dark with the whole Flash thing, because there were some there were some dead bodies and stuff in the episode. You know, people were dying, so that's a good thing. But. Yeah, some casualties are always good in a well, usually good in a story. Yeah, exactly. It's not too campy, and I, I like that. I like that. Mm. So, any final thoughts on this hero on this episode? Uh, I don't know, because I'm not really sure if I'm really looking forward to it. That's the thing. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me that I just more of an animation guy. I always prefer to watch things like in animated form. But uh, I'm always welcome like to the live action adaptations. But I don't know. Recently, I've been kind of starting to lose hope. Hard to, to to do a live action version of my, the my Flash. Live action is not the effects or anything. It usually always comes down to the writing. For some reason, no one can seem to either write the character right or the story is always like uh, flip floppy. Yeah. I agree that the writing in this this episode was certainly lackluster. It, it really, it really is. I agree. Uh, Normally, with an episode one, you want something that'll yeah. No, th- I mean, there's worse stuff out there that's not written smoothly, but this one, you know, some improvement is like required. Yeah, it seemed a bit generic. Is that the right word? I mean, yeah. yeah. The characters were generic. The yeah, yeah, was generic. Yeah, it goes back was... to what we said earlier. You could almost slip in like Barry Allen for any other superhero character, and it almost be the same story. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, I still have hope, though. I mean, I, I feel I understand completely what you're saying, Hero. I still have hope that this episode was just, you know, get it out of the way so we can get to the good stuff. That's that's what I'm hoping for. But we'll we'll see, we'll see. I still would say check it out and, and decide for yourself. Uh, but I don't know. I, there's definitely I expected more, and I had low expectations. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, my expectations are always too high. <laughs> they always are. Hey man, if you're always going with low expectations, you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> so That's how I feel. Low expect- oh my god. <laughs> it's like, oh, That's this movie's gonna suck. Yeah, let's watch this shit. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so, is so what about you, Z? Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, uh, could have been better, but uh, I think I think it's promising considering the main character. So. Right. Yeah. All right. So that was Phantom Group and our discussion about, obviously, the pilot episode for The Flash. If you haven't seen it, uh, we will put a link. You guys probably can get the link. Put it in the description for you. You can check it out for yourself. And, uh, yeah, if you have seen it, then let us know your thoughts in the comment section below on it. Like the video if you liked it. And check out the Phantom Group for all the great stuff that we do. Hope you guys enjoyed this different topic. Uh, we're out. Peace. Wally West is the best. Oh, damn. He wants out. Subscribe or die. Subscribe or die.